We've got a little bit of everything for you. Prospects, waiver ads, bullpens. Let's talk about it next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Monday, August 30th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And let's talk about it. Cabert Ruiz to be promoted on Monday. The catcher prospect for the Washington Nationals. He came over in the Max Scherzer trade, absolutely crushing it at AAA this season and is only 23% rostered. Scott, is he a must-add catcher? Where does he fit into the grand scheme of the catcher position? Look, catcher is an especially difficult position to break into the majors and become an impact player right away. And when I see that Dalton Varsho is only 50% rostered. Drevin Starno is only 50% rostered. Max Stassi around there as well. I don't know that I'm over those guys going to pick up Cape Bear Ruiz. If you're talking about a two catcher league, okay, probably somebody needs to pick him up. Uh, but I'd prefer to take a wait and see approach in a one catcher league. That doesn't mean I'm down on Ruiz, though. I think the power he's added to his game. This year, because he didn't show much of that previously in the minors. He mostly just a a high contact guy, like a 10, 11% strikeout guy, which is amazing. Um, But without power, you know, it it wasn't clear if he was going to be an impact player once he did get to the big leagues. Now that he does appear to have power and a significant amount of it, while not losing any of that contact ability, the upside is very high for Bear Ruiz. And I think there's a good chance he does become a stud uh, maybe as soon as next year. All right, so one catcher leagues, we're going to take it slow with Kbert Ruiz, but two catcher leagues definitely want to go out there and make sure that he is not on your waiver wire. If he is, make sure to add him. Jesus Lozardo, a.k.a. Wild Thing, he made a great start on Sunday, finally, and it, it took a while, but it was the first time he was wearing his glasses with the Miami Marlins, and he goes six shutout, one hit, one walk, eight strikeouts against the Cincinnati Reds, he had 15 swinging strikes in the start. 36% rostered is Jesus Lozardo. Would you be looking to add him right now? I would. I don't think it's a must, but I, I, th- he made enough changes beyond just the glasses uh, to suggest maybe he's figured things out. Of course, we know he has a lot of upside. He was great as a rookie last year, former top prospect. So it was also the first time he worked with Sandy Leon veteran catcher who has a history of working with pitchers and they changed up his pitch mix for this start too. his changeup had been his fourth most thrown pitch. He threw it 30% of the time in this one. And it was responsible for 7% of his swinging strikes and really faded the fastball. It was only his third most used pitch. He went breaking ball change up primarily and saw much better results, looked much more in control. You wonder how much the glasses, you know, he was wearing contacts, so it's not like he was blurry eyed up there, but still, um, most of his pitching history has been with glasses and he says he'll stick with them from now on. So, you know, hopefully he figured things out here. I think there's a good enough chance of that, that I'd try to take a flyer on him. If I had the roster space for it, let's talk about two big boppers, some hitters here who might be available in your league. Would you rather have Patrick wisdom or Miguel Sano? Patrick wisdom back-to-back games with a double dong on Friday and Saturday. And then Miguel Sano, over his last seven games, he's batting 286 with three homers. Both of these players are rostered in under 60% of CBS leagues. Scott, who would you rather have, Miguel Sano or Patrick Wisdom? I'd rather have Wisdom. It's a similar profile. They strike out way too much, but they hit a lot of home runs as well. Uh, In fact... Wisdom is now up to 25 and 83 games. So we're talking about nearly a 50 homer pace, right? Over a full season. OPS is 899. Now, if you've had the if you if you've had Patrick Wisdom for the, the past several weeks, you may be wondering how his numbers could be that good. But that's you know, they come in bunches. He's now hit seven home runs in his past nine games. And I love the Cubs matchups for this upcoming week. So wisdom would be my choice between the two. And maybe, maybe uh we should just stick with him. As much as as cold as he can get at times. Let's quickly wrap up with some bullpens here. And after an 11.42 ERA in August, the Rockies have removed Daniel Bard from the closers role. Carlos Estevez picked up a save for the Rockies on Friday. Sergio Romo got the save on Saturday for the Oakland A's. Andrew Chafin got the save on Sunday 
for the same team. And Lou Trevino is apparently being given a break from the closers role. Adam Ottavino had saves on both Friday and Saturday for the Red Sox. And then Alex Reyes blew another save on Sunday. And manager Mike Schilt said he will reevaluate the right-handers role moving forward. So, Scott, how would you rank these options? Estevez, Ottavino, Giovanni Gallegos, Sergio Romo, and Andrew Chafin, if you need, if you need saves. Look, I don't think any of them is going to be a permanent change, but there's, of course, a chance of it. My, my first choice would be Ottavino. He seems to have secured the most at this point. And then Giovanni Gallegos, Carlos Estevez would be third. And for the A's, I, I mean, I guess Sergio Romo, but I, I, I think it's going to be Lou Trevino's job again soon enough. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.